All right, hey everybody. Uh, so today, I wanted to bring you all along with me uh, on the maiden voyage of the log wagon. Uh, we're doing a little bit of cross hole logging today, and we're mainly just playing. I've already got a load on the log truck, and now I'm just finishing up getting this post oak out that we had cut. This is the last tree we got cut for now. And I wanted to bring you all along and let you all uh, see how the log wagon works. Uh, so the first thing we gotta do is get this butt cut out of this post oak up here to the log wagon and the first thing i'm gonna do when i get it drug up here uh is we're gonna go a little bit past the wagon and then swing it around uh to put the butt end of the log the swell part on the back and there's a method to the madness on loading these log wagons uh you really want to put your bigger logs on the outside and you also want to kind of stagger them uh, as far as swell is concerned, but you want to try to get your butts, the swells, on the back, on the outsides. And the reason for that is, is if you hit a tree going through the woods, if the butt is in the rear, it'll just kind of scoop the wagon over, versus if it's in the front, it'll actually, you know, get yourself hung. Uh, so we're going to swing this log around right quick. And uh, this is where skidding with stretchers and tongs uh, is nice because it's easier to manipulate, you know, get stuff turned around and tweaked around in a tight spot. And y'all, I have really grown to, I've really grown to learn to love skidding uh, with tongs and stretchers just because it's so quick and easy. And if you're short in on the truck or on the wagon, uh, it's, it's very productive because you can you know you can get in and out pretty quick but i want to show y'all how we swung this thing around here uh, i did try to cut a few parts of the video out uh, not because i didn't want to show y'all but just to save time because we've already got a you know a 40 minute video already uh, but i did kind of want to take you all along and just show you uh some of my inefficiencies and shortcomings and uh you know we can all just kind of learn together and this video is as much for me as it is for y'all Now this gold chain, gold colored chain that I just throwed over the log, that's our cross haul chain. That's the one that we'll actually be hooking the mules to, to load the log. You've also got a chain that comes off the bed of the wagon that goes under the log. We call that a bed chain. And uh, you know, you want a fine center of that bed chain. It makes a V coming under the log and you want a fine center and that's where you want to hook your cross haul chain in a perfect world. Now, if you've got swell in a log, uh, in other words, if it's got taper to it, you want to move your cross haul chain hook towards the taper. And y'all, uh, you don't have to offset it very much. You know, a few inches left or right of center, you know, will make up the difference in the taper and will allow the log to be pulled up on the log wagon evenly. Uh, the gold chain that I'm pulling on here, the cross haul chain, it's a long length chain. And the reason why is because I use my strip, my uh, tongs uh, to hook into the link uh, to pull off of. The chain that goes under the log, the, the bed chains, are made out of like hoist chain. It's real uh, high grade and it's small links uh, to where it will go under the log a lot easier. And a lot of these things, y'all, that I'm telling you and, and uh, stuff that I've learned about, I've learned it from my good buddy Jeff Fergie over in Somerville, Tennessee. Uh, those guys over there have done a lot of cross haul logging. It was real popular in that part of the country, uh, this part, that part of Tennessee. 
and uh, Jeff is really good. And Jeff, if you're watching, I owe you a lot, brother. I really appreciate you. Now on this log that I just put up here, my blocks that's on my bed of the wagon, I did not allow those blocks to be all the way over yet. And the reason why is because you don't want that first log going all the way over to the edge of the wagon because it could potentially turn the wagon over. Uh, so you kind of want to stop that first log in the middle, so to speak. And then that way your wagon don't tip one way or the other because uh, it can make, you know, for loading the next log a challenge also. Now, as I told you, when you're loading this wagon, you want to put bigger logs on the outside and smaller logs in the middle. Now, I'm putting some pretty decent sized logs on the wagon all the way around. Uh, this log is about right. The only problem with it is it's got a little bit of a bow in it. And when I roll it up there on it, the bow is going to be facing up. And that's going to cause us a little bit of trouble uh, when we go to our second stack of logs on top. And you all see that here in just a few minutes. There are so many little tricks to this wagon, y'all, that can make you efficient or inefficient, uh, you know, if you don't go by the steps, uh, you know, uh, from like where you put your PV at when you're not using it, uh, you know, pulling the chain back across, you know, there's a technique to that, you know, and getting it reset. Just every little thing you can do uh, to cut a little corner cut some time off you know you want to do that uh because every little old step helps a bunch and at the end of the day you know once you've done this <clears throat> 10 or 12 times a day you know if you save a couple minutes here and there you can really 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 make a a big difference in how much time you waste or how much time you're efficient and I'm gonna try to point out my inefficiencies here so that way y'all can see it and also it'll be good for me too. Now here I've got to undo my blocks and slide them out to the outside. And uh, what that'll do is that will allow this first log that we've put on the wagon to come on over. When I start pulling with the mules, it'll just kind of roll on over on its own uh, with the chain coming across it. And then the second log will load on right behind it. And those blocks y'all are to keep it from rolling plumb off the wagon. Now, another thing, uh, when it comes to hooking your cross haul chain, uh, you know, I told you about the taper, how you always want to move towards your taper. Also, y'all, 
uh if you've got a log that's too far forward or back you know just a few inches maybe like six or eight inches you can hook your cross haul chain you know in a direction that you need it to go uh and you can walk that log back or walk it forward uh, a little bit you know this is a you can't get very extreme with it because if you do your log will go up on there crooked and it'll just cause you some problems you know you want it to go in there straight so to speak but if you need it to walk back a few inches here or there you know you can walk it back by offsetting your cross haul chain maybe that'll make sense what i'm saying there now what i was doing there y'all was giving the mules a little rest a little rest uh you know this is a little bit uphill right through here this post oak's heavy uh and i want to keep my mules you know willing keep them to where they they know that i'm gonna give them a break if they'll give me a good pull and uh, that's how you do it y'all give them a little break every once in a while don't run them out of wind now this doggone post oak has got limbs all over it and a lot of limbs i couldn't see whenever we were cutting it they were on the bottom and my chainsaw's in the log truck, which is about 200 yards away from us, and I didn't want to fool with having to go all the way up there to the truck, get the log, get the uh, chainsaw, so I just grabbed my axe off the wagon. It stays on the wagon for a couple different reasons, and uh, this is one of them, just to knock limbs off with. Here's another inefficiency, you know, me not keeping a hold of my chain real good. You know, that cost me a little bit of time and energy and movement and whatnot. And uh, it's just little things like this, y'all, that can cause you, you know, trouble. It's not a detriment to you one way or the other, uh, but it does make the difference in a smooth, you know, slow, steady, and smooth operation versus an, an erratic one that's not quite as efficient. And uh, that's where I want to be. I want to be in that smooth, uh, steady and efficient. Now, the more the mules do this, y'all, the more they work to this wagon, uh, they're going to learn where to stop at and how to go around this wagon, and they'll kind of do it on their own, you know, after they work to it a while. 
Uh, they do that with the side loader truck, you know. If they see the truck, they're gonna go toward it because they know that's where they're gonna get a break at. So, you know, they're smart. They learn stuff like that. And uh, you keep them in the woods long enough, they, they learn just about as much about it as you do. And uh, Kate and Alice is, is doing me a real good job. I'm proud of both of them. Now y'all, I had to get the wagon set up to load on the top. I had to move my skid poles up on the to the side of the log that's on this side. I had to move them up. I also had to come up between that very left log and the middle log with my, with my bed chains to where the log would go up over the top of the stack. But I want y'all to remember what I told y'all about that second log we put on, that middle log. Remember how I told you the two outside logs need to be big? and the one in the middle needs to be a little smaller and this one was a little smaller but the problem with it is as it rolled up there uh it's got a little bit of a bow in it and the bow is facing up i don't know if y'all can see it there and that's going to cause me just a little bit of trouble right here uh this log that we're going to load it ain't going to quite go all the way over like it's supposed to uh and the fact that my load on this wagon right now is kind of too far over towards the right if that makes sense because my bed chains they hook to the log wagon right in the middle of the bunk if i would have had my load scooted over to to the left of the log wagon just a little bit it would have helped me some but y'all can see what's going to happen here uh and judge for yourself See, the angle of the dangle just wasn't quite right, and it didn't go over just like we needed it to. But that's all right. We're just going to unhook uh, from the cross haul chain and go get another one. We'll fix it here in a minute.
Now here I need to fix my skid poles back. Uh, they need to be up on the side of these, of that uh, log that's on the left hand side. They need to fit kind of tight in between that log and the ground. Cause if it don't, when the log starts up skid pole, it'll it'll get jacked up and it just won't let your log go up at exactly how it needs to. Uh, so we're gonna fix that back, pull my cross haul chain back across. Well, actually this chain that I got in my hand there, that's my bed chains. Uh, there's my cross haul chain, that gold one. It's the one I actually hooked to the mules. And then there's the other part of the bed chain and y'all can see how I've got it run up over that log there. And then I've got to kick some of this mess out of the way. I've drug a bunch of leaves up here. So let's get that cleaned out of the way right quick. And then we'll lay our bed chain down, roll the log over on top of it. Uh, and then what we got to do, I mean, obviously we can't load this log like it is right now because it ain't got nowhere to go it's up there on top. We've got to get that top log over. So what I'm going to do is get the swamp hook and uh, put the swamp hook on it and we will hook cross haul chain to the swamp hook and then take the mules and uh bump it over it don't take very much and it'll just it'll move it right over where it needs to go Now we got that log in position, it's ready. Uh, we just gotta roll this top log over a little and then we'll back the mules up and re-hook the cross haul chain to that log that we got ready down there on the ground. Now I've got my ax stuck in that log. I don't know if y'all can see it, but it's on that very right hand log right at the top. I've got my ax stuck in that log to serve as a backstop. But see how when I pulled on it, that cross haul chain popped it out. And the reason for that is because I had my ax stuck kind of in the middle where the cross haul chain was and I didn't need to have it there. I should have had it down uh, closer to the front or either at the rear. You don't want to have it nowhere in the middle cause you know, crap like that'll happen and uh that's another inefficiency you know that's just something you got to restab by action to a log you know and that you know that takes time uh another thing that i forgot to tell you about a little earlier is my chain boomer uh that was my very first mistake uh i did not get my chain boomer out of its place on the back side of the log wagon uh, and now it's got a load of logs on top of it and I can't get it out. So we're gonna have to deal with that little problem here in a little while.
Now, something else that Jeff taught me, a little trick, is when you're loading a heavy log uh, to hook long, you know, get out kind of away from the wagon a little piece and hook long on it, which kind of goes against everything I've ever been taught because, you you know, usually if it's heavy, you want to hook shorter to it. The shorter, the better. Uh, but on this case, not so much. It has to do with the angle at which they're pulling and they can get it up on their hips and just handle it so much better. And I've tried it both ways, and I have found that, uh, you know, Jeff is right. It works better in this particular situation to hook a little bit long. And there's just little bitty things like that, y'all, uh, that really make a big difference on making this work and making it not work good. You know, and Jeff's been doing this for 35-plus years, and I reckon when a fella's been doing it that long, if he hadn't learned how to do it and learned all the little tricks by then, he probably won't know. You know what I mean? So when a fella's been doing it that long, tells you something, you probably will listen to him. Whoa. All right, now I'm storing my tongs uh, right there under my fifth wheel on the wagon. And I've got my wagon set up to where I can pull off the stay chains now for those of y'all that are curious about this you can go back and watch the stiff tongue wagon video and it shows it in detail up close uh right now the stretcher's not hooked it's just sitting up there so y'all don't freak out i'm going around to hook the tongue chains first because you always want to hook the brakes before you hook the pulling power the back end hook your front end first and then hook the back end and i'm going to be pulling straight off my stay chains that's what i'm fixing to do right there i'm going to reach down there and grab that stay chain I've got a ring on my stretcher on that side. I hook it in. Now I'm going to come around on the right side and I'm going to grab that stay chain and hook it in the ring. Back a All right, now the mules are hooked and ready to go with the wagon. I'm going to stab my axe in the back log uh, back of the log back here and that's going to be to uh, wrap my bed chain around and then this gold chain i'm rolling up here now our cross haul chain we're going to use it to bind the load down and i'm fixing to discover right here right now that my chain bind, uh, binder is underneath this log pile on my log wagon and i can't get it out Okay, so now that I know that I can't get my chain boomer out, uh, what I did is I just wrapped it around and we're gonna hook the chain on itself as tight as I can get it. These logs are in there pretty tight anyway, so they ain't going nowhere. And I don't, I'm not really going anywhere with this load, y'all. It was just kind of doing it for play <coughs> to get used to the wagon. Uh, so it's, you know, it's no harm, no foul. Uh, another inefficiency that I got going on is right here. I hooked that uh, cross haul chain, my binder chain. I hooked it before I got my bed chain uh, squared away. And that bed chain needs to go to the inside of that cross haul chain uh, and not on the outside. And uh, see how it's on the outside of it there? It should be on the inside of it. So I'm gonna have to walk back over here, unhook it and put that chain on the inside. And that's just the inefficiency. You know, that's what I was getting at about little things you know uh taking up a lot of time and extra extra energy and whatnot uh but this uh the bed chain i'm gonna run it back here to the back wrap it around my axe that'll keep it kind of stored out of the way uh and then the uh cross all chain will hold the load down then we're gonna throw the skid poles up on the wagon and my peavy and we'll be ready to go
All right, now what I'm gonna do here is just let them ease up. You can kind of see how things are gonna, you know, go as far as starting and stopping. Uh, we got about 500 feet on the wagon right now, which is a pretty good little load. It's about 8,000 pounds, time you count the wagon and all, uh, with this heavy wood on it. Uh, so it's a pretty good load from the start and the stop. Uh, and I wanted to check my suspension, you know, the mules, uh, as far as how they're hooked front and back. And I, I, I've got a little bit of room to tweak. I need to tighten them up just a little bit. I need to either drop a trace train link or maybe uh, one of my state chain links to, to uh, get them a little closer to the wagon. And then that way they'll be a little bit tighter suspended. But on a stiff tongue wagon, y'all, and I mentioned this in the stiff tongue wagon video, uh, you don't want them tongue chains up there on the end. You don't want them tight whenever they're pulling. You kind of want them tongue chains to be loose. That's the idea of a stiff tongue wagon. Now y'all can see they're just kind of easing along nice and slow. And uh, you know, that's what I like. Slow and easy is the way to go. The slower the better, actually. And it's not really the pulling this load that is hard for them, it's the stopping it. Uh, you know, because they got, you know, good 8,000 pounds roughly behind them. This Tennessee box bridge and harness that they've got on really, really helps with that because it's a combination harness to where they can use their hips, you know, and their the top of their hips and the back of their hips to help slow a load. Uh, so that does help a, a lot uh, with the box bridging. Now we're gonna get the load off. Uh, the first thing we gotta do is uh, get the chain off and the skid poles you know, and all that good stuff that I throw it up on top. We got to get all that mess off, and then we'll be ready to uh, take the blocks off and then roll the logs off. All right, now here I'm gonna pop these uh, block chains and blocks off. And uh, just little things, y'all, about this wagon, for instance, you know, is where you put your blocks at, you know, when you take them off. You know, are you gonna put them here or there or where, you know, wherever? And uh, that makes a difference on how efficient you are. You know, just little stuff like this. There's a lot of little tricks to it to, to really, you know, help you maximize your efficiency. And I'm learning, you know, this is, this is my wagon and this is only the second time it's ever had any logs put on it since I've had it. Uh, so we're still learning and we got, you know, a good bit of ways to go to be real efficient. Uh, but I'm thankful to Jeff. And again, Jeff, if you're watching, thank you, man. I really appreciate it. Uh, Jeff has been a big help. He's really taught me a lot about this wagon. And I'm sure there's a lot still yet that I've got to learn about it you know, about which logs to put on where and how to situate them and whatnot. I mean, there's there's a lot to it, a lot more than you think anyway. All right, now we're going to roll them off with the peavy. 
And this is, I'm no stranger to this because this is how we unload the log truck at the mill, uh, you know, with the trip stands and whatnot. And I'm sure y'all seen our videos uh, to where we unload. So this ain't a real big deal. But you want to get these big ones off and then kind of roll them over out of the way, you know, get them on over out of the way and give you plenty of room to get the rest of them off. All right, now we're going to get everything reset, get all the blocks put back on, uh, get the skid poles loaded, get the PV loaded, make sure my axe is in the right place, and uh, then we'll be done and ready to go back to the woods. Now, if we was going back to the woods, per se, and actually using this for the log job, I wouldn't have brought the skid poles up here. I would have just left them down there in the woods, and then that way that would have been one less thing I had to deal with. Uh, but I'm going to carry it to the house, and I'm going to hop on here and take a little ride and just kind of show you all that. But look here, y'all. I want to tell you thank you for every one of you that watches our videos and comments and all that good stuff and shares your stories with me. I really appreciate that. It means a lot to me to get to hear from y'all. 
And uh, I encourage the ones of you that don't comment, please do. It helps our videos to get circulated for one thing uh, and, you know, has a little further reach. But also, I enjoy hearing from you, you know, and uh, hearing about your, you know, your people that might have logged or farmed with horses or something like that. Uh, or if it's just something that you enjoy seeing, hey, let me know. I really appreciate it, and I enjoy hearing from you. Anyway, y'all take care, and thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.